go over to John 14 this morning. And I think uh, we're going to finish up with uh, what we're doing here with John 14. I think we will today. Unless there's a question out there that I haven't answered about it. And so we're going to uh, just read through it again. Begin at verse 1 and read down through verse 26. And we'll focus in on uh, verse 22, I think, today. I think we've got to cover everything else, but I want to answer this question about, I want to talk about this Judas who is not a scary. And uh, we'll talk about the 12 a little bit uh, as we have them in our Bibles. All right. John 14. <coughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go ye know, and the way ye know, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If he had known me, he should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so again, we're talking about familiar passages just specifically <coughs> considered. We have spent some time here in John 14. And uh, just the bottom line thumbnail of, of John 14 is Jesus is just within a few days, hours of going to the cross. He's preparing them. He's telling them that he's going to go, but that he's going to send the Comforter. And when the Comforter comes, the Comforter will enable them to do things and to carry on. And uh, that he will come back again to get them and to receive them to himself. And so basically he's preparing them for that and, in, and giving them some encouragement. And while they really don't understand it all while he's telling them, then he, t you know, he makes it clear after I'm gone, then you'll understand what it is I'm trying to tell you. But he's preparing them for some troublesome times that they're going to be going through over the next few days. 
And of course, uh, again, that comforter that's coming is when the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, is poured out upon them in that upper room. And you see that manifestation of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that comforter that's sent. Uh, just like he said in verse 26, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so again, that's a reference to that outpouring of the Spirit that takes place there in uh, Acts chapter 2, uh, day of Pentecost, and all those things that we see take place. And, and what we see taking place with the apostles in the early part of Acts. So that's what that's all about. I think we've pretty well taken care of covering that uh, over our previous studies here at John 14. Is everybody good to go with John 14 on all that? Anybody got any confusion or questions about that? All right, very good. So I wanted to go in and take opportunity because it just it ran up a, 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 I won't say a red flag, but it did run up a flag because I said, well, here's something we could chase a rabbit with just a little bit. But at verse 22, where Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? And we've talked about these verses as we've studied through. We've talked about 23, 24. We've been through all that. We've made reference from previous verses in the chapter. But I wanted to talk about this verse 22 and just the idea of Judas uh, saith unto him, not Iscariot. When you start reading through the different list of the apostles' names and who they were, uh, sometimes it can get confusing. And so I've, I've tried the best that I've been able to decipher to go through there and, and get a list of the apostles, the twelve, put their names together and try to put them in an order so that we might be able to better understand when we read through there because, again, sometimes they go by two or three different names. Uh, and then I'm also address a, a question about John chapter 1 and then the other uh, references to the calling of the 12. But let's just go down and kind of look at them and uh, see if we can make this a little simpler. I've got it up on the board, and I'm not going to take you through all the passages and all the references. Uh, uh, they're easy enough to find as we go through, and I've got, I mean, it'd be very laborious, laborious to go through every reference. I think you'd get bored on me if I tried to take you to every reference. But let me just take and show you, show you what their names are and how they're called, and then we'll make some connections that maybe we haven't made before. So you got Peter, and we know Peter was not only called Peter, but he was called Simon, and he's called Cephas. And so as you read your Bible, you'll see Simon Peter, you'll see Simon Barjonas, you'll see uh, Cephas, and all of these being references to Peter, who we know as the Apostle Peter. We know you have Peter and Andrew. We know Andrew is Peter's brother. Uh, then you've got James and John. And often we'll see Peter and Andrew, to, and almost always you'll see those two names linked together, especially in the list of the apostles. You've got James and John. James and John also are brothers. They're the sons of Zebedee. Paul, Paul called, or, uh, Jesus called them the sons of thunder. Uh, if you remember, it's James and John who asked who would be the greatest. It was their mother who asked if they could sit on his right hand and on his left in his kingdom. And so that's James and John. Of course, when we talk about the, the three, the inner circle of the twelve, then often you see Peter, James, and John together. It was Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, we see that, and well, oftentimes we'll hear John is the beloved disciple or the, or the disciple whom Jesus loved. And so we have those three, and then, of course, the four, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then we have Philip. And we have Philip the Apostle, and you'll notice later on, you've got Philip, who's one of the deacons. You've got the Philip of Acts chapter 8. And the Philip of Acts chapter 8 is not the Philip of the 12. And uh, so Philip, the Philip of Acts chapter 8 is one of those deacons that was chosen in Acts chapter 6. So sometimes that can be confusing. Which Philip is it? And so you have to just let context tell you that there was an apostle, one of the 12, it was Philip. And then we have Nathaniel. And sometimes you'll read a list of the 12 and it'll give the name Nathaniel. Sometimes you'll read the list of the 12 and it'll say Bartholomew. And so Nathaniel and Bartholomew, these names you get your tongue get tangled up. 
So Nathaniel and Bartholomew are one and the same. So two different names. And then you've got Thomas. And like with Thomas, we have, of course, we know of Doubting Thomas. Or it's Thomas, who is also called Didymus. It's interesting how they had these different names. And you have Simon, Simon Zelotes, or Simon the Zealot. And it tells us that Simon Zelotes, Simon the Zealot, was a Canaanite. And so from Canaan, uh, obviously a Jew, uh, one of the twelve, but Simon Zelotes, Zelotes the Canaanite. And then you have Matthew. Matthew, and this is, I learned something here that I had never put together before. We've got Matthew, who is also called Levi, who was the publican. Remember, he was the tax collector. And so you have Matthew, who is also called Levi. He's the publican. And Matthew is referred to as the son of Alphaeus in one place. And then you've got James, who is also called the son of Alphaeus. And so if we've got Matthew or Levi, the son of Alphaeus, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and sometimes we call him James the Less. And again, I'm straightening out some confusion here a little bit, even in my own mind as I've looked at this. When you have James the Less, uh, as I studied through, it was trying, why was he called the Less or the Lesser? Uh, it's the best I've been able to find from everywhere I've been able to read, he was called the Less, and it's really humorous why he's called the less. It's because he was shorter in stature than James of James and John. So you got uh, James the less, not because he was less in importance or less in prominence or whatever as, as one of the twelve, but you got James the less, and he was the less simply because he was shorter than the other James. And so you know we we have our horse folks, and at one time it was Sam. And then it was Ron and Laura's Sam, and we called him Little Sam, which he's bigger than I am now. And then we had uh, the other Sam, uh, a girl that rode with us, Samantha or Samara, who we called Sam. And so it was confusion. So we had Sam and Little <laughs> Sam and the other Sam. Or, and so, uh, you know, so you had that. You got James the less. So you got James, and then you got the shorter James. <laughs> And so that was how he was identified. He's also called a son of Alphaeus. So that makes me think then that James and Matthew must have been brothers. At least that's what makes sense to me. Now it's possible they were cousins or something, but if, if they're both identified as a son of Alphaeus, just like James and John are called sons of, Ze of Zebedee, it sounds to me like Matthew and James were most likely brothers. And then you've got Judas, not Iscariot, which is over here in our text of John 14. You've got Judas, and this Judas, who is not Iscariot, is also referred to as Labius and Thaddeus. So you'll look through a list of names of the twelve, and you may not see Judas. You may see Labius, or you may see Thaddeus. Well, again, all those are references to Judas. Well, Judas is also now called the brother of James, the son of Alphaeus. And so now you've got Matthew and James and Judas, who apparently were all three brothers. And then in my mind, uh, and I've said this before, that this Judas then, I believe, was probably the Jude who wrote the book of Jude. So just like you have, my name is Sammy. Uh, Laura and Ron's Sam is Samuel. But we know him as Sam. So you got Judas, who I believe is probably Jude of the book of Jude. And then, of course, you got Judas Iscariot, who is called the son of Simon. Now, we know that Simon was a common name. You've got Simon Peter. I don't think Judas was the son of Simon Peter, do you? I don't think he was the son of Simon Peter. You've got Judas, son of Simon, and you've got Simon Zelotes. I don't know if he was the son of this Simon or not. I don't know. It just says he was son of Simon. You've got another Simon over there in the book of Acts, I think in Acts chapter 8, in connection with Philip, before Philip goes to see the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip's preaching, and you know there's this sorcerer named Simon the sorcerer. Uh, I don't, you know, so there was, the name Simon was a common name, so... Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, I don't know which Simon was his daddy, 
Uh, I, I don't know that it would have been Simon Zelotes, the Canaanite, uh, and I certainly don't think it was Peter's son. Uh, so, you know, who, which, which Simon was his daddy, I don't know. But the Bible just tells us he's Simon, uh, Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And then, of course, we know Judas became the son of perdition. He hung himself. He lost his position as one of the twelve. And then I've drawn, put in Matthias because Matthias then rounded out the twelve. Now, the reason that's important is because when we read down through there, it can get real confusing as we read the different names of the twelve uh, because, like I said, we, we may not see Judas's name, we, but we may see Labaius or Thaddeus. And, and so, again, it gets confusing if we're not careful. And hopefully, by having that written down, uh, we can make a reference to that, and that might help us when we're studying out and looking at the twelve apostles and who they were and what their ministry was and who was doing what, when, and where. And by knowing the names, and there are multiple names, that might be of help to us. Now, a lot of times in my teaching in the past, I have talked about uh, this James. James, the son of Alphaeus, James the Less. And I've made reference to James, uh, the James of Acts 15, so to speak, or the James of Galatians 2. The James who wrote the book of James, which I believe to be this James. Well, in just my own uh, uh, laziness or my own lack of study, I hadn't made that connection. I just hadn't paid attention to it, that there were two Jameses that were actually named among the twelve. I said that James and Jude uh, may have been those who were saved on the day of Pentecost or in those early days of the book of Acts. And I've never studied out the list of the 12 and all their different names like this. And so so I'm, I hope I can correct that. So when we talk about James then, James of Acts 15, or Jude, uh, and the, the author of the book of James, or, or Judas, or Jude, who I believe is a reference to the one who wrote the book of Jude, then, then those were all apostles. And they weren't saved after the day of Pentecost, but they were actually part of the twelve all along. And so I'm going to seek to correct that mistake in my own ignorance and lack of study there. Do you find that helpful at all? Yeah. I hope so. And uh, uh, I, I, again, and I apologize because I just never paid attention that we had two Jameses listed <coughs> on the twelve. Uh, because I just hadn't focused on the 12 that much. But when I went to look at that, when I saw Judas, not Iscariot, well, who is this Judas? Uh, because you don't see that name listed among the 12 a whole lot. Uh, that's where we come up and we find out that that's this Labaius or Labius and Thaddeus. And so it's interesting to put all those guys, put all those guys together. And so now, and then we start talking about what most of the time, and you'll see, you don't see Matthew listed a whole lot or Levi listed as the son of Alphaeus. You've got Matthew kind of standing alone. Then you've got James the son of Alphaeus or James the less. And of course that's to distinguish him from this James of James and John. So you've got James the son of Alphaeus. It tells us which James he is. And then you've got Judas the brother of James which distinguishes him from Judas Iscariot. So it's important to uh, realized why they put that together. <clears throat> anyway, I thought that was interesting. All right, now, when we were studying John chapter 1, go back there with me right quick. We're studying John chapter 1. And we'll go to verse 35. And I'm going to try to put something together here to help us understand the best I can understand it. If you've got a better grasp on it, that's good to go. Uh, share it with us, but I'm going to try to put it together the best I can piece it together. And so you've got uh, John chapter 1, and of course John, the Apostle John of James and John, the Apostle John writing the book. And we've got, uh, we were in this area when we were talking about John 1.29, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. 
And so we've got the ministry of John the Baptist. And so we begin at verse 35 of John chapter 1. Again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples. This is John the Baptist. The next day, and this is the day after uh, uh, Jesus, uh, John the Baptist seeing Jesus, saying, Behold, I, you know, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And, uh, and so the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, so these must be two of John's disciples, John the Baptist, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? So you've got these two apostles of John the Baptist, or excuse me, two disciples of John the Baptist, and they see Jesus, and they see John the Baptist call upon Jesus and call him the Lamb of God. And uh, so they begin to follow him. And Jesus, of course, turns to him, verse 38, ask, uh, what is it? Why are they following him? What do you seek? And they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He, Jesus, saith unto them, those two disciples of John Baptist, come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. And so if it's about the tenth hour, what time of day does that put it? The tenth hour of the day. That puts us at what? Uh, four o'clock in the afternoon? Okay. Tenth hour of the day, Jewish time, puts us about four o'clock in the afternoon. And so, uh, uh, so they abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Verse 40, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon <laughs> Peter's brother. And so we get identified that one of the two of the, who were disciples of John the Baptist who had been following or listening to John the Baptist probably had been baptized by John the Baptist was Andrew, <coughs> Simon Peter's brother. And so we know who, uh, verse 37, the two disciples, we know one of those is Andrew, and so uh, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, verse 41. He first findeth his own brother Simon, of course, Simon Peter, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which be, is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida in the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip findeth Nathanael. And so you start seeing these following through. And so now we've got uh, Peter. We've got Andrew. No mention of John or James in John chapter 1, not here. But we've got Philip then, and we've got Nathaniel. Philip goes and finds Nathaniel, and so we've got that going together. Now go with me to uh, Matthew chapter four, I think it is. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea for their fishers. <laughs> and he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother in a ship with Zebedee their father mending their nets and he called them. They immediately left the ship and their follow, father and followed, them, and followed him. And Jesus went about all of Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And so here we've got Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee 
he sees uh, Peter and Andrew and he calls them. And a little bit farther there he goes along and he sees uh, uh, James and John and he calls them. Well, that's kind of confusing when you compare Matthew chapter 4 and John chapter 1. And so I'm trying to put the scenario together. Let me see if I can put it in a way that makes sense to y'all. John the Baptist has his ministry. He's got folks who are listening to, responding. We know Andrew was one of those. I believe that John the Apostle was probably the other. <clears throat> and so Jane, Andrew and John, no doubt in my mind, if they're disciples of John, how would you be a disciple of John the Baptist and not have already submitted yourself to John Baptist's baptism? Doesn't that make sense to you? And so I believe that they had submitted, that they'd heard John the Baptist there. They had responded in faith. They had been baptized by John the Baptist. Uh, Jesus, Jesus comes. Jesus is baptized of John. Uh, John says, behold, John the Baptist says, behold the Lamb of God. And these two disciples of John the Baptist, they see this going on with, with Jesus. And so they leave and they go... Uh, uh, following him and and uh, they end up spending maybe an evening with with him and then the next morning they get up and they go back to their craft they go back to fishing and so <laughs> the next day Jesus is walking along and he sees them again and he said and he sees then Simon and, and Peter and Andrew and he calls them because he already knows those two. He's already met those two. And then he sees uh, 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 John. And he sees John. And so he's already met John. And he sees John and his brother James. And they're there with their brother. We Other passages tell us that James and John and Peter and Andrew, they all work together in the fishing business there. And so he sees them. And that's when they begin to follow him. And so where I'm trying to go is that what we see take place in John chapter 1 probably happened the day before or a couple of days before what we read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke when we see the calling of Peter and Andrew, James, and John as it's recorded in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Does that work for everybody? Does that make sense? It's the only way I can make sense of it in trying to understand one thing I know when I approach my Bible, are there any contradictions? No, there's no contradictions. So when I have one telling of a story in John that reads different than it reads in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, then I have to step back and try to put together a scenario of what could have happened. And so as I put the scenario together, then it looks like that it's John and Andrew who are disciples of John Baptist who see Jesus first. And it does say they went to his house and they abode with him, but it doesn't say that they followed him at that point. You can go back to John chapter 1. It doesn't say they began to follow him at that point. They, they meet him. They spend an evening with him. Uh, they call him rabbi. Uh, they, they've heard the testimony of John the Baptist concerning him, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. It catches their attention. The next morning they get up. Of course, it tells us Andrew goes and finds Peter and says, come meet this Jesus. And so that takes place. But it looks to me like the next morning they get up or whatever and they go back to fishing. And that's when we pick up the story of, that we read in Matthew, Mark, and Luke about uh, 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 Peter and Andrew, James, and John then leaving their nets and leaving their trade, leaving their craft and actually beginning to follow Jesus as uh, his disciples doing that. Okay. Everybody good to go there? Questions about that? That's the best I can make sense of. And if you read it, study it, and you come up with something else, praise the Lord. Come share it with us next Sunday. Or if you've got light today, share it with us today. But uh, that's the way that I put it together that makes sense to me. Okay. Does that answer any questions, maybe? Hopefully it does. Now, neither one of these Jameses are the high brother of Jesus. Say again? The high brother of Jesus. 
that's and there there is the confusion that comes in there too because you've got a you got a James in there that's called the the brother of Jesus yeah. and so you know James the son of Alphaeus uh, and Matthew the son of Alphaeus and Judas the brother of James and I'm, as I'm reading and, and here's let me give you the yes on that let me I'm I'm stumbling over my words let me apologize for that. When I read, I couldn't find anything in Scripture about it, who the son of Alphaeus is. The commentaries say that Alphaeus was married to Mary, who was the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now that's confusing to me because now you got two sisters in the same house, both of them called Mary. But that's what the historians and the commentators tell me. Now again, commentators are just that, right? Who knows? You know, I don't know. But the historians say that this Alphaeus was the was the husband of Mary, who was the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So if that's the case, that makes Matthew, James, and Judas all cousins of Jesus, not actually a brother of Jesus. And then, of course, also the commentaries tell me that oftentimes in families, cousins were called brothers. We did. When I, when I grew up, my cousin Charlie and I were like brothers. Like brothers, yeah. yeah. And so, and in my teaching, I have talked about James, the Lord's brother, and, and I've talked about him being the half-brother of Jesus, and... and uh, uh, and all I'll say is that based upon what I'm reading and studying here, I was just wrong about that. Okay? It seems to me that you've got Matthew, James, and Judas who are sons of Alphaeus, and I'm told by what I read, not in Scripture, nowhere in Scripture does it tell me that Alphaeus and was Mary and so on and so forth, but the history tells me that Alphaeus was married to Mary, a Mary, and this Mary was the mother of, uh, or the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus. And then you've got at the cross, you've got at the tomb at the cross, you've got Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and then you've got the other Mary. And so it puts them all together in that place. Just like we talked about Simon was a common name, Mary was a common name. And so sometimes it gets confusing, which Mary are you talking about? And uh, gives all new meaning to that song, Mary, did you know? <laughs> which Mary is talking Mary, Which Mary are you talking about? Mary, Mary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. It has nothing to do with what we're, what we're talking about, but uh, I just wonder how Zebedee felt when his two sons, uh, James and John, just dropped their nets and took off. Dropped their nets and, and uh, uh, left Daddy with the fishing <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering if he, and we have no way of knowing, but I wonder if he supported their move or if he didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's hard to figure, you know. Yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting thing to consider, and, and we're not told. Uh, we, do, we do know that James and John's mother, the, the wife then of Zebedee, you know, she was a outspoken for them because she's the one that went and was asking for her boys to get some place of prominence when Jesus came into his kingdom. So, uh, uh, so Mary, uh, not Mary, uh, James and John's mother must have been supportive. But I mean, you can just imagine you got a daddy. He's got a fishing business. He's got two sons coming up, and the sons just bail on the business. It's been Zebedee and sons painted on the sides of the boat for years, you know, and now he's got to go out there and mark off on his sons. Uh, so you know, it's uh, yeah, it'd be a tough situation. <coughs> Since we're chasing rabbits, I've always wondered why John is referred to as the one that Jesus loved. He loved them all, didn't he? He loved them all. But I'll be saying that I'm the one that Jesus loved. Yeah. I'm He's called the Jesus. beloved disciple, or the one who Jesus loved. Yeah. Evidently, those, just like anybody else, you've got a group of friends, but then you've got that one friend you just really care more about, you know? And uh, so it, it would seem that uh, that, that John and, and that John the apostle and, and the Lord had a 
closer kinship for whatever reason. And uh, whether it was just, you know, pure personality or what it was, I don't know. But, uh, and of course, we know that uh, as far as, uh, you know, writing and so of course, John wrote more. Uh, it's, uh, uh, John is the one who was on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. And, uh, and it's John to whom Jesus whispered and said, uh, you know, who is it that's going to betray you? You know, Jesus said, one of you. And John, you know, who is it? And Jesus whispers to John, the one that dips his bread in the cup with me, that's the one. So Jesus told John who was going to betray, and John was the only one who knew. Was it John that uh, he told to take care of his mother? John was told to take care of his mother, yeah. We were told to take care of Mary, Jesus' mother. Uh, best we can tell, again, by church history, it was John who outlived the rest of the apostles. He lived longer than the rest of them before he was martyred. He was the last to martyr. And of course, John writes the book of John. He writes 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. He writes Revelation. And so John writes four of the books of the New Testament. Uh, second to Paul, who wrote 13. <laughs> and, and again, of course, Peter, James, and John being part of that inner circle. As I talk about this stuff, I, I know it, it creates confusion because of things I've said in the past, just making comments. But hopefully today clears that up about who these guys were and what their roles were and what their relationship was as far as apostles. And, and so... Uh, and, and even the relationship to the Lord. Uh, like I say, the, probably the best, the most clearing thing for me is to understand that the James of Acts 15, the James of Galatians 2, is this James uh, who was actually one of the 12 all along. And that's a correction that really needed to be made as we read and study and understand. It's this James who writes that book of James and like I said, I, I can't help but believe that the, the Jude is also Judas, Lady Astadius, who writes that book of Jude. Again, that all makes sense to me. So that brings us back to then all of the books of the what we call the New Testament then, apart from you know Luke. Of course, Luke writes Luke and Acts, but the other the other books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, or Matthew, well, never mind. <laughs> but you've got so many of them written by apostles and, uh, and James and Jude being also apostles alright any other questions nothing real deep today maybe more confusing the purpose is to make things less confusing as we consider who the apostles were and who's doing what when and where alright let's stop take a break we'll stop early take a break and we'll be back <laughs>